Hello again Struck Club, I'm finally bringing you my first build video for the Cursed Captain class since it got released uh, for Third Flight 3 and this is the Pirate Zapton build as I like to call it, a build uh, that's using Walker White Storm from the Electrode alongside Lightning Strikes and then we're uh, taking advantage of uh, skills that are super strong on the Cursed Captain such as uh, Powder Keg, such as Broadside which can also be replaced for another coin using skills such as fire or maelstrom if you prefer so and I've also included broadside as an extra trickle of DPS uh, then on top of that we have a banner to give us our uh, extra damage buff uh, we have um, black spot to curse enemies uh, like bosses and high priority high HP targets to take 40% more damage and we have uh, our usual mobility skill as, as well as an empty SWAT that you can put whatever you want. I put uh, take a swig uh, without putting points into it. And we have imbue relic, the skill I love, um, the skill that uh, I've been including in most of my builds, uh, probably all of my builds ever since it got added into the game. Um, it's amazing uh, and if you're using a relic skill I don't see a reason why you wouldn't want imbue relic. Uh, in there unless it's not an energy cost relic skill so imbue relic um, when using imbue relic it's always nice to at least use frost wall and i'm using frost wall and uh, a north mace but you can use a, a glacier sedge instead of the north north mace if you have a good rolled one uh, to make imbue relic cool down from 60 down to 30 seconds uh, in the worst case you would be using a blue weapon uh, and maybe just uh, using the frost wall um, so you would still have 45 seconds instead of 60, so it's still good. Here's the build killing a boss, uh, I mean obviously keep in mind I'm not the best at using my builds, I'm not the best at rotating my builds, more about rotations in the gameplay segment at the end. First I'm gonna show you uh, the skills, skill points, uh, how I've spent them and uh, then talk about um, um, why I've picked those skills and then show you the gear. Here we are at the skills segment where I'm going to show you the skills and the levels I've decided to take. But before we show you that, I'm quickly going to mention that, keep in mind, I've got two extra levels to all my curse skills and two extra levels to all my piracy skills from the three Commodore uh, pieces of the set that I'm wearing. I'm going to quickly show you the tiers of each skill uh, and later if you want you can stay until the rest of the segment to figure out why to, to, to listen to the explanation so tier 2 black spot tier 3 dead banner uh, level 10 walk of ice storm one point into tingling sensation um, you would want chance to shock on a shield ideally then um, you have five points uh, lightning strike and um, Tier 2 double cross for the passive, tier 2 fire for the passive, tier 2 raid walk uh, and tier 3 in Ponderbus, bro Broadside and Powder Keg. Now the explanations. As you've noticed those are level 10 and not 8. And some people would be wondering why is it 8, uh, why, why is it 10 plus 2 not 8 plus 2? Why didn't you remove the points? Well every single level after level 10 gives the skill extra damage. So um, leveling it at 10 and getting 2 points from um, the set items and maybe 2-3 points from a cape would keep increasing the damage of the skill and it's amazing. In fact if you can get um, those 2 points from the set and on top of that add 3 more points to Powder Keg or to Ponder Bus, it will be amazing for this setup. So Wonder Bus, Powder Keg, the, the strongest skills in the game. This is amazing, it may not be as spammy as this. But it does solid amount of burst damage when you when you have this item, the, the showman. Uh, oh, and by the way, this is the legendarium. Uh, showman, Woosby, Sandals, Liu General, but more about the legendarium later. So, um, Broadside is just there as a fewer. Um, I have it on my left click, so as I'm walking and I'm hovering over an enemy, it, it might automatically uh, trigger itself. If not, I can trigger it by holding shift and attacking uh, or just clicking on an enemy. So Ponder Bus um, or Powder Keg, you have to decide which one you want to focus on uh, and then start stacking damage to that one in your gear and start stacking uh, levels to that one if you can uh, in, the, in the cape. 
This one is only as a passive um, tier 2 bonus, so it's 4 plus 2 for the piracy skills damage that boosts those skills. And those are the most overpowered skills in the game, especially this one for, for how spam it is, it deals an, um, an ungodly amounts of damage. It, it, it does so, so much damage for, for the amount of spamminess it can offer. This one is for mobility and it gives Curse Captain skill cooldowns, which doesn't seem to, to affect this one. It seems broken and this instead of um, 9 seconds remains 10. This, uh, however, gets 1.5 seconds shaved. This gets uh, 0 0.6 seconds shaved uh, off. And this one seems to get some of the cooldown shaved off. This one is to give our relic skills, um, particularly Walkerwise Storm. I'm not sure if relic skills boosted Lightning Strike. I think long ago I tested it and Lightning Strike did not get boosted by, by this relic skill bonus. But Walkerwise Storm does get that extra damage. And it's not bad. Um, and it, it's also amazing as an active skill. I don't care about the damage this does. I care about the 40% damage enemies take for 10 seconds after I hit them with this. You can pretty much keep it up at all times because at level 6 the cooldown is dying. Uh, actually, n not at level 6, but in general the cooldown is 10 seconds. And with the, with the passive here, we get that down to 9 seconds. So you can just... Uh, non-stop have black spot on an enemy if nine seconds weren't enough to kill an enemy well you can redo it um again um the red banner is there to give us uh, mostly i care about the damage honestly i care about the damage i don't care about the attack speed i'm not using basic attacks um the movement speed it's it's fine but uh, it's only within the borders of the banner so it's not gonna help me much the crit chance is nice but i'm already I'm already capping my crit chance with um, the Woods Beast Sandals and the Pet Aura. This Aura is 15, the Woods Beast Sandals are 25, this is 40 total, which is the limit. So the thing here I care about is the damage. The thing here I care about is the extra damage they can take. And you've probably noticed here I've put Take a Swig. Even though it's just level 2 from the set. It's a good filler. You can put whatever you want, but I think Stake a Swick is not so bad because it gives you extra damage reduction for 5 seconds. And since we don't use any basic melee attacks to get the uh, fighter spirit or we don't have any other sources of damage reduction, this is not bad and it also he it can heal some little bit there. So as a filler skill, it's not a bad choice. Um, so yeah, that's the burst damage, that's the spammy damage, the mobility. Um, this one gives us damage and damages nearby enemies. This is a great proc, but you need chance to shock in your shield. And this um, gives you, with one point it increases the shock damage by 50%. It gives you a little bit of extra chance to shock, which you don't care about. And it gives you extra 3 second duration to the chance to shock. Now, the shield, if it doesn't give you a chance to shock, you have to do it from here, from elemental bonus. You, you want a chance to shock in a shield. Or a focus item if you, do, if, you, if you don't have a shield equipped yet, if you're leveling. But yeah, if you want to be using uh, lightning strikes, chance to shock is a must have. And you get it from here. And you want this chance to shock, not the other one that says plus percent to shock chance affixes. Now, off to the legendarium. Um, since we're using Imbue Relic um, and we're using uh, Frost Wall uh, and uh, the North Maze or the Glacier Sedge, that means we would be using uh, Imbue Relic every 30 seconds. And that means every 30 seconds, if you use Imbue Relic, when you have Lil General in the Legendarium, you would get 25% extra damage, 25% uh, extra damage reduction, which you can stack with Take a Swig for 8 seconds. Which is great. Also you get casting speed uh, because you have the two pieces of the set equipped. And that casting speed helps you uh, spam things like Ponderbus quicker. Anything that's not a basic attack is considered um, uh, a, a skill that benefits from casting speed. The Woods Beast Sandals we said we want that uh, crit chance from here. We don't care about the attack speed and I really don't uh, care about... The, the immunity to stun at knockback, but it really helps to have that immunity. But even though uh, there's still some things that can go through that immunity. Now, the showman. Here is where the, the build gets uh, flexible. If you don't use the showman, an option would be um, the, the spire, the fortune spire. 
So you have to decide. You want to do double the volleys of um, Thunderbus? Do you want double the kicks? Um, there's another option with Big Fish, which I haven't gotten. But if you want, if you want to focus more on broadside and stack broadside damage instead of Powder Keg or Plunder Buzz, which I wouldn't recommend, but someone might uh, like it that way, then Big Fish is good. Um, there are other options, but those are the three top choices, in my opinion, um, over there. Uh, if you don't have either of those, um, good alternative option for farming uh, while you're trying to get those items would be the Winter Weave Quiras. Winter Weave Quiras is nice because it works on any type of map, unlike the Woods Beast uh, or Skittering, etc., where you have to be killing that type of enemy. So you just kill an elite and then for 30 seconds you get 20% item work and movement speed. That's a good choice, worth uh, considering. Um, there are many other choices, but in general, um, this is my um, preferred setup for the pet skills. Uh, my preferred setup is Deadlier Strike, so I don't have to care too much about crit strike in my gear. I like using Battle Cry for more damage, I like using Healing Friendship, and I like Zoomies. And I like Zoomies because it increases the pet's attack speed and movement speed, and I want the pet to be attacking more often, so uh, this can trigger more often. Um, which is nice. And then there's another thing that I don't have right now, um, but there's a token that um, can reduce the pet's cooldowns. Uh, uh, as when the pet is hitting, it has a chance to reduce the pet's cooldowns, which is pretty nice, um, which means this one uh, would be perfect. And I, I like to use faster cooldown for pet's active skills here. Faster cooldown for pet active skills here would have been amazing, the same way it was wrote here. And you can get faster cooldown for pet active skills in the sockets of, uh, of those two. You, you can't get it in the socket of this one, unfortunately. But in here you can socket more. So in general, you just want your pet cooldowns to be as quick as possible. So that's it for the skills. Next is the gear. So here we are at the gear, gear segment. I'm going to quickly show you the bases and then talk about uh, good stats for each uh, spot. So here you want North Mace which looks like this, uh, this is remodeled, uh, or Glacier's Edge. Whichever you get with a good row, use um, that one. So whatever you get at levels at, at your highest possible level or for zero fix with good stats, use it. Um, then you want a Frost Wall, which I'm going to show you what it looks like, so you know this is what the Frost Wall looks like, this shield. And you want it, uh, I'm going to ex explain why. You want it so it can reduce the cooldown by 25. And when you have one of those two alongside, it moves it to 50%. So this from 60 seconds turns into uh, a 30 second cooldown. Uh, and this is uh, a major uh, build around me skill for this setup. Um, then you want three pieces of the Commodore. And those would be Cape, Jacket and Powdrons. Then you want Ancient Ember Boots. Or Woods Beast Sandals equipped. Equip one, the other one put in the Legendarium. It's that simple. Whichever has be better rows, do that. For the gauntlets, you want Winter Weave gauntlets. And for the pants, you want whatever rows with good stats. Uh, Winter Weave uh, pants would be pretty nice, by the way. So Winter Weave gauntlets are nice. Uh, and, and, I, and I suggest using those for extra survivability, but you can, you can replace them with anything else if you don't think you want Winter Weave Gauntlets. Uh, but um, Winter Weave Pants are also pretty good choice if you have good ones. Um, then for the pet Drat Neck Band, uh, and I, I also mentioned Token of Rapid Bartering, and then there was one here, I forgot the name, the one that gives you extra chance on pet hit to reduce the cooldown of pet uh, active skills. Um, they disappeared from the they disappeared from the legendarium, so I can show them from there. Um, now let's talk about why and what stats you would want. Top stats for the shoulders, for the chest and the leg would be damage to plunderbus or damage to powder keg. Uh, if you decide, you can go uh, a little bit different. Uh, and uh, stack damage to broadside. It's not that terrible of a choice. Uh, on the shoulder, secondary uh, best thing is crit damage. So basically a shoulder like this is perfectly rolled. F defense at the top, 
crit damage and uh, damage to a good skill, such as Powder Keck or Plunder Bus, and extra socket so you can put some more um, regular defense. This one is terribly rolled. First of all, it's level 46, it needs to be 60 or, or higher. Um, but uh, yeah, you would want defense at the top, then at the bottom you would want damage to Plunder Bus or Powder Keck. Um, or alternatively um, broadside, then another good thing you can get here is flat damage. Uh, if you can get flat damage, uh, it would be nice. I'm not sure if it still exists and if it's still possible to roll, but it used to exist before. Um, another secondary choice would be um, crit damage. It can roll on chest pieces. Um, or a third choice would be um, percent damage to to ice why ice ice because north mates and glaciers edge always have ice as the highest amount of damage so so that would be the best choice there obviously you would want a socket so if i were to choose i would go for damage with plunder bus uh, or powder keck um, alongside um, crit damage and a socket where i can put more defense here again damage with plunder bus uh, um, or powder keck alongside this cannot get crit damage, this can get crit chance and since we don't need crit chance I would suggest uh, stacking maybe um, ice damage or maybe stacking something else that you like more defense for example is always nice uh, and the socket for more defense on the boots you would want crit damage as your uh, best row and if you get lucky you can get things like uh, walk of ice storm duration um, that's not bad. Duration for Dread Banner is not a bad one, but Walk of Ice Duration would probably be the better option here. Um, shock Duration is not bad, but um, it seems kind of like a waste. We already have enough. More defenses are always good. So defense is um, is very important um, key to surviving later on. Chance to Evasion is also not bad. Chance to Block is not bad, but keep in mind Evasion and Block Chance cap at 40%. And if you cap both at 40%, that leaves around, I think, 35% chance to get hit or so. I forgot the exact number. Um, so, in the Gloves, you would want, again, defense at the top, uh, at the bottom, something like um, the uh, duration for Walk Wise Storm. Things like extra energy generation is very good um, on the on the gloves but uh, if you're using Kimbu Relic uh, at 30 second cooldown you won't need that energy generation um, anyways. Um, gear work is not bad but keep in mind gear work caps at 100% and if a map gives you 50 um, you, will not, you will not be able to get uh, more than 100 so consider getting 20% gear work from um, playing on ridiculous and 50 from a map that's already 70% so you only would need uh, you only would need 25 if your tree of work is at 5 points, you would only need 25. So gear work might be great, but it's not that amazing if you if you already are playing on Ridiculous and on a gear working map. Um, but uh, chance to work in evasion, as I already mentioned, not so bad. Um, and duration for walk wise storm again, probably won't need it if you're using Kimbu Relic. Um, but yeah, there are some stats you can get here. Here in the cape, the best thing you can get would be, uh, alongside the defense at the top, you would want 3 levels to Plunder Bus or 3 levels to Powder Keck. 3 levels to Broadside is not bad or 3 levels to Walk of Ice Storm is not bad, but I would uh, try and get Plunder Bus or Powder Keck uh, levels. You can get also Crit Chance, but as I said, uh, the way the build is set up, you won't need that Crit Chance here. Uh, and you can get uh, energy generation, uh, energy cost reduction, etc. But you probably won't need those either in the way the build is set up. So more defenses would be preferred. Here you want flat damage as much as you can. So right now I have Unholy Boat, Crit uh, Chance versus Shield and Chance to Freeze and No Socket. You would want ideally 3 affixes and a socket. Uh, like this one and in those three affixes you would want flat damage flat damage and flat damage It's very hard to get three times flat damage to so two times flat damage and chance to freeze is nice Two times flat damage and chance to shock is nice, but you're better off getting chance to shock in the socket of the shield um, Two times flat damage and crit damage two times flat damage and three levels to plunder bus or powder keck is not bad or another useful skill like walk of ice storm um, there are uh, alternative choices, but in general, I would um, ideally take uh, probably two times flat damage and chance to freeze because frozen enemies uh, cannot hit back, and freezing is just a great, great um, 
it's worth sacrificing one flat damage affix for a uh, chance to freeze. If you get lucky with two times flat damage and chance to freeze, it's gonna be amazing. But if you want max damage, obviously three times chance, uh, three times flat damage will be the best. And then you want a socket with flat damage. And the best place to get flat damage in a socket uh, is uh, the hot and cold, um, the hot and cold thing. This one, hot, hot or cold. Out of six, two are flat damage. So 30-ish percent chance, 33 percent chance to get flat damage. In this one you want at the top, um, you must have defense and chance to block at the top. At the bottom ideally you would have more defenses, uh, ideally regular defense, physical, because it applies to all elements, but if you have physical and some defenses to center elements it's not so bad. And then you want a socket and then you want to put chance to shock, and as I mentioned chance to shock comes from elemental bonus, and you want that chance to shock, not the one was X percent to shock chance affixes, not that one. Um, and yeah, uh, that pretty much I think covers all the all the items and affixes you can get. Here you want cooldown through pet active skills, cooldown through pet active skills built in, in the socket cooldown through pet active skills. This one shouldn't be contagion, it should be the one that gives you cooldown reduction to pet active skills as a base. Um, as a legendary skill and uh, here you want cooldown for pet active skills and in the socket whatever you pick and that pretty much uh, should cover all the uh, items all the gear and, and as i mentioned uh, would be sandals could replace this uh, as a base so next i'm gonna show you more of the build in action and here we are at the gameplay segment where i'm going to show you more of the build in action and talk about my preferred rotations of the skills in terms of rotation i like to build up damage before i start doing damage i like to build up damage buffs before i start doing damage and the best way to do that is first apply vulnerability apply the curse from black spot on the enemy and use the banner in which the, uh, order i think it doesn't matter as long as you use the banner and black spot first to get the damage bonus and to uh, get the vulnerability on the enemy after that uh, there are few things you could do i normally prefer starting with imbue relic so i can get uh, full energy and trigger Liu general and then uh, ac uh, activate uh, walk away storm um, then i get walk away storm to benefit from those previous three sources of damage boost and then walk away storm boosts the next uh, two or three skills we can use so after walk away storm i like uh, going for powder keg the three charges and if those charges are not enough um, you can uh, do plunder bus in fact most of the times i actually use broadside right before powder keg but sometimes i forget and use it after powder keg uh, but it's nice to, to have broadside first so that it starts trickling damage uh, and then you start doing your powder keg triple combo and then after that you you finish off whatever is left standing with plunder bus plunder bus by itself is pretty nice it's good um, it doesn't cost much coins the wounds it costs only one the wound and uh, even on builds that are using casting speed i will be making one such build later on the, the Zealot Plunder Buster um, uh, would be one such build where we're using Conjure Electrode and 1000 Volt Burst for casting speed. Even in such builds, Plunder Bus um, is okay and you, you would still be able to spam it, even with 50-60%, which is the ca limit of uh, um, casting speed. Um, as long as you have uh, things like uh, Tier 2 Fire and maybe um, suggested to have um, for a... For a built like the one i mentioned to have the other generation from the passive thieving spirits it's fine in this build we don't need that um here to fire is more than enough for this build to sustain plunder bus to get notified when i upload more content for this game or uh, other games like this one which would be wooters of all varieties isometric uh, third person ARPGs, uh, water shooters and all sorts of uh, waters like that. You could subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button to not miss out uh, on my content updates. And optionally you can even join as a member of the Struck Club uh, on YouTube as a channel member to get access to exclusive perks such as um, special emotes custom made by me, special badges custom made by me that represents how many months you have been a member for. Uh, as well as uh, opt-in 
uh, of editing tutorials that I can give for Photoshop, Adobe Premiere, as well as uh, shout outs and things like that. And I would like to use this uh, part of the video to thank all my um, YouTube members and uh, Twitch subscribers. Thank you for supporting the channel and keeping me going. Uh, thank you also for watching this video, everyone. Keep it cool, uh, Strug Club. Until next time, and goodbye.